Hi and welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk a little bit about this intercom system from the company TCS which, which stands for door control systems and I am installing these systems a bit at my company where I work and uh, I ask myself a lot how does it work in the background and what protocol is used because the whole system runs with two wires where also the power is distributed to the different devices and if for example someone presses the, the bell button the telephone is then yeah, ringing and what is the whole system doing in behind I was asking myself and so I looked a bit into it uh, took an oscilloscope and searched what protocol they used and how it's made and in the end I am now able to read what is on the bus via an Arduino and also to write on the bus and decode every command that it gets sent between the devices for example I have an Arduino Uno here or Nano and if I power it on the telephone should ring as you can see now and it will just ring one time then the Arduino goes into the main loop and does nothing anymore so yeah I will show a little bit what I did to get the protocol and how to yeah, wire the Arduino in it and what is going on in behind okay so I hooked up the bus wires to an oscilloscope to make it as simple for you to see what is going on behind and we have here yeah, both bus wires and one of them is the ground potential and the other one is 24 volts um, which yeah will get sent from the power supply to every device and the communication on this bus is working via voltage drops in specific timing and yeah that way the devices can talk to one and another and if I now send a turn light on protocol via the telephone here it's this button it will send a short, short pulse or a short protocol pulse over the lines and the power supply will recognize it and will turn on the relay so if I press it you can hear the relay clicking and also you can see here on the bus there are the voltage drops if I now make it to single mode we should be able to see the protocol a little bit better and I will go through it a bit we have here the 24 volt line and here we have about yeah, 20, 20 volts and we have here at the beginning um, a little bit longer pulse it's about 6 milliseconds and that is something like the start bit so we know there is a new protocol coming on to the bus and then we have these short pulses here and here is for example a longer one and here is another longer one and then here we can see a little bit a deeper voltage drop and that's because that is the answer from the power supply back to the telephone so and okay and so and to decode the protocol we have yeah a, a zero and a one and the zero is a two milliseconds pulse and the one is a four milliseconds pulse so if we count it right we have zero 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 one zero zero one zero 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 and here the last one is just uh, the waiting for the answer of the other device um, yeah so and the protocol itself is the first bit is always the length of the protocol so if we here have a zero the length is two bytes and if we have a one here so a four millisecond pulse the whole message is four bytes long then we have here in this case two bytes and the last bit is a CRC check 
So in this case it is long. So a one. And the message itself is yeah, the first bit isn't yeah used, but after then we got um zero 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 one, which is a one in hexadecimal. Then after it we have a zero zero one zero, which is a two, and then we have eight zeros which is just zero zero so we have the byte in hexadecimal one two zero zero and this is just the light protocol and you can decode any protocol like this this if I press another button on the first is again the six milliseconds pulse as a start bit then we have a one so it says the message is four bytes long then we have the four bytes and yeah they go over and the last one is again the CRC then it waits here for the answer of the telephone but I press a button where no telephone is connected so it has a timeout after 22 milliseconds and then it will restart the message to see if it was just felt yeah, that the telephone doesn't got the answer and it will just retry it one more time and after that it will just be silent because it doesn't, that will, it doesn't got any answer from the telephone. So as you may also wonder how to get the speech transmitted over the bus, I will just show it by picking up the phone and you saw a small voltage drop on the on the bus here when I pick it up and if I now speak into the telephone we can see the speech as a line and that way yeah, we can also see how this is transmitted it's just um, used as a normal audio line on the 24 volts or in this case it's not so much we can look how much it is about yeah it's about 22 volt so it will go to 20 or 24 volts in between and there we have the audio data and after that it will get back to 24 volt here I painted as good as I can the schematics for sending onto the bus we have here for once the A cable which is the 24 volt bus line and the B line which is uh, just ground and all I am doing is using an ULN2003 um, transistor array IC and two 1.2 ohm resistors to just short the bus to ground so in in the end it's really just a shortage of the bus but the power supply is made for it so it knows that it's normal and I'm just controlling the output yeah as as described as the bus is working okay the whole system for the receiving part isn't complicated at all too we have here the A and B line from the bus again. We have uh, 24 volts to 20 volts on it because of the voltage drop. And the B line is going directly to ground again. These 24 volts are going over a 1 mega ohm and a 160k ohm resistor, where it will then be 2.8 volt to 2.2 volts, depending on the status of the bus. It will then go into the Arduino Nano or Uno into the comparator and because we need a reference voltage um, at the other side of the comparator I just use two 1K resistors to make a 2.5 voltage um, yeah, middle voltage between 2.8 and 2.2 volt to recognize or start the interrupt when the voltage drops or goes above it. I'm also just putting the um, data into the analog in zero pin and so this way 
I can just see how much voltage is on the bus just to have it somewhere in the yeah in the schematic and if we make one schematic out of it it looks like this it's a bit a mess but in reality it's just one PCB with about seven resistors one ULN2003 and yeah with this small PCB I'm able to send and read to the bus and I also made it compatible to the yeah, producer software so I can use the interface software from the TCS company to speak to the bus and yeah read what, what is on this on it and yeah that I will show next okay we are now on the software side of the whole thing I have here the code that I was showing at the beginning where it will just send one yeah, ringing command to the bus to the serial number which is written in here and here at the beginning I just define the output pin for the bus data I will define how long is a start bit, how long is a 1 bit and how long is a 0 bit so these are values in milliseconds and then there is a short description of what the bus looks like and also here again it's the length of the bits and it will just describe again so the first bit is uh, describing the length of the command if it's zero they are getting two bits uh, bytes and if it's one they are getting four bytes plus the CRC of course at the end and yeah then um, I describe how it goes and here I'm just defining the command I want to send and if it's a zero at the beginning the system knows it is a call so we want to call some device then there are five hex values if I got it right now these five hex values are the serial number every time so if there were four zeros and a one then we want to call the serial number number one which doesn't exist I think but this is how it works and the last two hex values or the last byte is describing what call it is so I will get into that later into the description of the protocol itself okay to send out the command we first define the output pin as an output and then we call the function send protocol in hex and here is this function and we first define the length of the command and we checking this by the yeah, value in it so if it's bigger than 4 f's so then 6500 and so on um, we yeah making the bits 32 and the first bit to a 1 so we have an indicator for the sending signal we then make the output signal high wait 6 milliseconds for the start bit and then we just changing the output to the other value so every we toggle the output and then we wait for the first bit and after that we transmitting the two bytes or the four bytes depending on what we are sending also in it we making or we calculating the checksum for the last bit which is just an XOR of the current checksum which is at the beginning one and then it's every time XOR and then we send it out at the last bit and then I make sure to put the output pin low again so that the bus isn't shorted the yeah endless and that's it for the super simple sending um, here the description of the protocol I will get to that later for now I will show the other code I made and just to informate you <laughs> I will put every code to github so you can yeah, copy it or use it and yeah this is the 
big code I would call which will for once parse the protocol that is coming on the bus and for the other side it will also send the messages to the bus again. So here we have the send protocol hex again. Um, yeah, I will try to begin at the setup and we'll go through the code a bit. So we first set the serial or begin the serial. We yeah, put the output pin um, as an output again. And here we are enabling the analog comparator that I'm using for the Arduino Uno or Nano, whatever you use. The whole thing would also work with an external comparator, which is yeah quite simple to install. I just didn't use it because then I can yes save one part. And what is important is here these two last values. We want to have the comparator interrupt on a falling and a rising edge. So we know every time the signal changes. And then the next thing is the loop where it will check the serial incoming data for specific protocol and here I am yeah, trying to use the company's own interface software and that's why it is like it is. So they always start their protocol with an uh, yeah, with an hex one. Then um, the in data will get cleared. If it's another value, the in data will get filled with these values. And if the bit we are receiving is a f four, then it will analyze the string that it got from it. And that's what I'm doing here. And yeah, I am checking for specific commands from the software, which I know are correct. So for example, this command from the software will just check if the interface is online and then I will send back just a hashtag and if the command is dot three f I know it wants to have my identification so this thing here will send the serial number of the interface plus the software version and so on I just filled some yeah not so important values so that it just works the next thing um, is if it's just an, a space, then I know the software wants to send something on the bus, which I do here with just the input value that are coming from the serial will get sent out to the bus. That's it. Another thing here in the loop is if an incoming command is ready, so if on the bus was a command that was sent, we will print it here out to the serial so the software from the company can parse it inside of it. Also, um, we have here the interrupt routine where it will yeah, filter the data that is coming on the bus so it will first look how long was the duration of a high or low part and it will just say it's a zero bit it's a one bit it's a two bit in my case it's, this is a start bit just to make it simpler for me or it's uh, longer than that then everything is wrong so we just have yeah the current position is reset to zero and we have current bits 3 which is used nowhere but it's just simpler to have it somewhere. Then here it checks for the position of which bit we are receiving right now. If it's 0 and the next bit is a 2 then we know we can yeah make the current position plus 1 and we have a start bit in this case and we can reset all values, reset the CRC check and the current length is for now zero. Then if we are in the position one, so the next time the interrupt gets called, we 
set the current length to the current bit which we are receiving and also going to the next yeah and the next check then we check for a position 2 to 17 which are the first two bytes then if we are at position 18 we check if we have current length of 1 or of 0 so if the command is ready and we only need the CRC bit and then it will either repeat the whole process until we get to the um, all four bytes and do then the CRC or it is doing it right here yeah, and if the command int ready is set then we um, clear the current position and that it is ready so it does not get called again and also we check if the CRC is correct so even that is implemented we then make a command ready or set the command ready to notify the main loop here that the command is ready and we can use it that's all for this program you can also use these values th that you are getting on command ready and do anything with this. It's just a hex value from yeah, 0 to yeah, uh, 32 bits, the un unsigned integer. And yeah, to that I will get now. I will now show a bit the company software that is used to configure the whole system but normally you would ha have a commercial interface to interact with the bus and I'm just emulating it with my yeah with my Arduino code you have to enter um, a reg registration code at first start and I know how to calculate the code but I will not show it to you I will put my code that I calculated in for the serial number I got on the device, so the hex 22222, which is yeah, then calculated to the real serial number, and with that we get a code to yeah, continue in it. If I now click on OK, the software will talk to the interface and will then continue checking if the code I entered is correct. So I will just do it now and it should work. So it now it says it's successfully activated. After that it already has the um, interface online and it is talking to it. And one thing is you also have to disable the reset function on the Arduino so otherwise the software's timeout will um, fire because it takes too long until the bootloader is started. For this I'm just yeah, making a capacitor between the reset and the ground pin of 10 UF. Um, okay, so to um, see something on the bus uh, I will first do another thing and this is you have to um, enter a starting parameter into the software which is I am an expert and, and with this starting command we can see more commands in it so we have the monitor function and I think I can already push a button on the table and it should be yeah passed right now and here you can see it there was an in command an a in command or protocol which was this and it uh, yeah uh, passes to a door call to the serial number which is sending here from the outside station zero and if I for example press the light button then we have an A in protocol and the 1200 I showed earlier on the oscilloscope which reference to the light command or protocol. I can also open the door then it will yeah, say it was a 
door opener command or a light command, it can be both. And also the serial number from where this command came. Also we can now make a new project and search for devices on the bus, which will do it now. And you can see a bit of the commands that are happening here on the bottom. And there should be three devices. Yeah, it now phones three devices. So it now has three devices here and we have to define what what device it is really. And then yeah. Is there is one thing that does not work until now and that is, that is uh, writing the to the EEPROM of the devices. Um, that is done by some special commands but I don't know what the software is waiting for so I'm not there and it's not so important yeah just I wanted to show the parsing of the commands here at the bottom and I can also now click on the light button here and it will send out a light command and I can hear the really clicking I can also make a yeah, and that's something like uh, the talk is over and then it will end every talk. I can also um, set here the device and try to go into it, which does not work. Maybe like this, yeah, and then I have the telephone itself and I can also call it, so if I now press here, then you should hear the ringing of the telephone. So it will yeah, make an internal call to the serial number, blah, and then from in internal uh, number 63. And I can also yeah, just end the call. Um, what is here very interesting is the parser of these codes and I will go to it right now, which is here, there and there. And then we have the this file and inside is a description of the complete protocol that the parser is using. So we don't have to decompile anything. We just have to read it carefully. And I will go a bit through it so you can see what I mean. There are for once the A protocol or the A protocol bin. The A protocol itself are the hex values and we have here eight hex values. That is the long protocol with four bytes or we have the whole thing in binary because sometimes only one bit is important for what is happening. And here directly we can see if a zero is at the beginning and every other value is, yeah, not important then we know okay it's an internal or an external call or something with calling and if now the seventh bit at the end is a zero we know okay that must be a door call or a door call from the outside station and then we also see here that the um, the serial number of the device is read here so from the bit 27 to 20, uh, 33 we have the serial number from the outside station or if we call the device itself then we have from hex value 2 to hex value 6 which is the second to the yeah other the, the first or from the second and then five uh, hex values are the uh, serial number from the door station and yeah then again we have the internal station which is here then again just so you you need to read it a bit but then it's quite simple the same thing is here for if the seventh bit at the end is a one, then we know it's an internal call and not a call from the outside station. 
and it goes on and on like that and um, I will just go to another one uh, here for example a four hex value protocol and if the first one is a one we know it's to control something at the door so if we know it's a one and a one and the last values are not important then we know it was a door opener command and then the 11th to 16th binary value is the door station where the command is from and then we also see here if the first one is a one and the second one is a two we know it's a light command and it goes on and on for every command that is could happening on the bus itself okay so i also want to show what is happening on the serial port if we just look at it via the raw values and if i now press some button on the yeah, outside station like this we can see there are two messages on the bus and we also saw that earlier on the oscilloscope we first have the uh, calling command to the serial number and as it doesn't get answered in the 22 millisecond uh, range it yeah resent the command just to make sure it wasn't yeah dead on arrival or something like that i uh, then will also press a program button and you heard the telephone and also it was just yeah sent one time the telephone answered to the outside station and this command is um, just to notify that the calling is ended and I can answer the telephone so if I will pick up the telephone now we get a command which states for a beginning of a call and if I put the telephone down again we get some yeah, end call protocol and that it's done and that's quite simple you can pass as I said these values on your own in sides of the Arduino if you want to build something like this this and yeah also the whole system is not that secure you could just go to an outside station and send a door opening command onto the bus and then it will open the door without anyone noticing it but then you are only in the corridor and it's yeah not not that big of a deal i think it's yeah depending on the thing of course okay that's it for today with this tcs bus hacking arduino stuff i hope you liked it and just uh, for other bus systems it may be interesting and I wish you a great day. Bye.